Hey, good morning, Re Student Life. It's great to see you again. Uh, I loved our time last night in our relate groups. We were, if you weren't there, I'm sorry, I just blinded all you. Um, if you weren't there, we did spiritual gift testing. Uh, this whole month we've been talking about what has God gifted you with. So last night we made it very practical. We spent some time in worship and then we went off into our groups and did our tests. Uh, if you're here and you're listening, right here below in the comments, just type really quick what your three spiritual gifts are. Whether you're watching this now or you're watching this 10 hours from now, type your top three from last night if you're there. If you weren't there, type below the, hey, I missed out. Send me the test. I can email you the test. I can give you the instructions. It's super easy. And you can find out what your spiritual gifts are. That being said, um, what I want to just uh, start off with today is Romans chapter 2. We're going to go verses 1 through 16. So if you have your Bibles, that's where we're going to start at. If you don't have your Bibles, I'm going to read it. Uh, you have time to go grab them. You have time, to, if you're on your laptop, to pull up Bible Gateway. Uh, but here we go. Romans 2, 1 through 16. And then I'll give you uh, some some of my initial thoughts on this. I'll tell you there's a lot to unpack. But I'm only going to be able to do a little bit in this time. So here it goes. If you judge someone else, you have no excuse for it. When you judge another person, you're judging yourself. You do the same things you blame others for doing. We know that when God judges those who do evil things, he judges fairly. Though you are only a human being, you judge others. But you yourself do the same things. So how do you think you will escape when God judges you? Do you disrespect God's great kindness and favor? Do you disrespect God when he is patient with you? Don't you realize that God's kindness is meant to turn you away from your sins? But you are stubborn. In your heart, you are not sorry for your sins. You are storing up anger against yourself. The day of God's anger is coming. Then his way of judging fairly will be shown. God will pay back each person in keeping with what they have done. God will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good. They want glory, honor, and life that never ends. But there are others who only look out for themselves. They don't accept truth. They go astray. God will pour out his great anger on them. There will be trouble and suffering for everyone who does evil. This is meant first for the Jews. It is also meant for the Gentiles. But there will be glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good. That is meant first for the Jews. It is also meant for the Gentiles. God treats everyone the same. Some people do not know God's law when they sin. They will not be judged by the law when they die. Others do know God's law when they sin. They will be judged by the law. Hearing the law does not make a person right with God. People are considered to be right with God only when they obey the law. Gentiles do not have the law. Sometimes they just naturally do what the law requires. They are a law for themselves. This is true even though they don't have the law. They show that what the law requires is written on their hearts. The way their minds judge them proves this fact. Sometimes their thoughts find them guilty. At other times, their thoughts find them not guilty. This will happen on the day God appoints Jesus Christ to judge people's secret thoughts. That's part of my good news. All right, there's a lot there to unpack, and I know I don't have time to do all of it. So I just want to give you my kind of big takeaway. Uh, if you're in our uh, re am on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, we were talking about this issue a little bit about judging. And I think the big thing that we need to realize is the Bible does call us in different passages to judge other uh, Christians because we're trying to build each other up in the faith. And if we don't ever say, hey, you're, you're missing the mark here, you can do a little bit better here. If we're, we don't do those things, then the, the struggle or the problem really is the fact that we're not going anywhere as Christians. We're not growing. We're not becoming more Christ-like. We should be calling each other to higher levels. And a lot of times we mislabel that as judging. If I'm challenging you to do better for God, that's not judging. That's helping you become more like Christ. Where judging comes into play is ex more so on with somebody who doesn't believe in Christ, somebody who would not profess to be a Christian. It would be the equivalent of this, is if I go to the grocery store and I buy a fish, and I buy it in the nice packaging, it's been descaled, it's been cleaned, I can go home and take that and cook it. 
on the flip side, if I go fishing right now and I catch a fish, I can't just cook the, the fish. I have to, to clean it. I have to scale it. I have to prepare it. I have to fillet it. There's a process there. And the same kind of thing goes for sharing your faith. You can't just walk up to somebody and expect them to know every single thing that God has ever said in the Bible. Even with that, there's some things that are in the law that when we talk about the sacrifices and different things like that in the Old Testament that don't carry over into the, the post-cross era. That yes, there's moral uh, issues that happen. Where the Old Testament says don't murder. You shouldn't murder today. Uh, there's moral issues like that that we're still accountable for. There's cultural issues and traditional issues that we're no longer uh, accountable for. And it's, I don't have time to talk about it all in this video, but if you talk in the comments, uh, I'd be glad to jump in and, and be a part of that. But what I want you to realize is just in this last uh, part, some people do not know God's law when they sin. And people are considered to be right with God only when they do obey the law. Gentiles do not have the law. Sometimes they naturally do what the law requires. Is What I want you to realize is the fact that Gentiles, in, the, in this case, were people who didn't have the law yet. I want you to think of your friends who don't have the gospel yet as Gentiles. They don't have it. We can't expect them to follow the law. And we can't try and beat them over the head with the law. We should make them aware of it. We should point them towards God. We should point them towards him. Because if we're pointing people to our Heavenly Father, then what's going to end up happening is they are naturally going to realize that the Holy Spirit is talking to them and the things that they've been struggling with, the things that we see in their life that we don't want to see in their life, that God will work that out in his timing. With Our job is to called to love people, number one, and number two, lovingly pointing them towards repentance. It's got to be the Holy Spirit doing that. You cannot save anybody. You cannot eliminate their sins. Holy Spirit can eliminate their sins. And we, our job is to point them to the Holy Spirit. That's not saying, oh, you're great. You're totally fine where you are. Yes, I know that you're doing sins X, Y, and Z. But you can stay there because God is love. No, God, God is love. But he also calls us to repentance. And so we should be pushing people in that direction in a non-judging um, way. Because if we're judging, just like when you think of that street corner preacher who is up on their, the little milk crate and saying, repent or go to hell, that when we're in that kind of attitude, we're not loving people and we're pushing them away from Christ. But if all we'd ever do is love them, then we're not pushing them towards Christ. So that's my challenge for you today, whether you're in school or whether you're on spring break, is simply, one, let's have an attitude where we call other Christians to a higher level. That includes yourself, though. If you're going to call help call somebody to a higher level, you need to make sure that you're coming and doing everything you can to get on a higher level as well. And then with our friends that aren't Christians, let's love them and let's point them towards Christ. And that very well may mean that you need to stop doing particular things in your life, even if you don't think there's anything wrong with it. Because how can I call someone else to a higher level, whether they're in the faith or not in the faith yet, if I'm not willing to make sacrifices myself? Others may but I may not. That's a, a genie mayoism right there. Others may, but I may not. There's things I choose to not participate in because it would not push other people towards Christ and it won't push me towards Christ. So today, do everything you can to push and, and build up your fellow believers and do everything you can to push people towards Christ so that the Holy Spirit can speak to them, convict them, and they can make a decision to follow Christ. That's what I got for you. Uh, I just want to let you know on Tuesday, we're uh, not going to have a uh, redevotion live. I'm going to be in Arizona and the time difference is just not going to work. So we'll be back next Thursday. And remember in the comments below, I just want you to, when you watch this, to put what your top three spiritual gifts were or give me your email and I will send you a copy of the spiritual gift test if you missed out last night. And Kate Rosevere, I see you out there. I'll, I'll wave to you because I know you're watching live. Uh, that's all I got for you. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. See you on Sunday.